This isn't gonna work well. <laughs> it's fun. Sometimes he's naughty. Sometimes he's nice. But every time he's Dirt Guy. It's Dirt Guy Drive Time with your host, Dirt Guy. Hey, welcome to the citation edition of Dirt Guy Drive Time. First, right out of the chute, sitting in traffic. Now, I hate traffic. It's going to take me forever to get home. But the traffic may mean people are going back to work and because uh, people are just tired of this shit and they're just going to go back to work. Um, Heard some stories about city of Los Angeles tightening up the noose on uh, this whole COVID thing while other counties and stuff are loosening the grip because they realize what a load of crap um, all these precautions are and how it's just wrecking the country. There's some businesses that have gone out of business. They'll never come back thanks to these ridiculous measures. But that's just me talking. What do I know? But actually, not the focus of this episode. Nope, I've, uh, if you guys have been watching my show for a while, you know that uh, I've got code names for some of the characters in the pantheon of the dirt world. Stay in your lane. Are you texting? No, you're just short. I can't even see over the steering wheel. <laughs> uh, pantheon, pantheon of characters in the dirt world. My little world I've developed here. One of those characters is the Cobra. <laughs> Remember the Cobra? Uh, I, uh, the owner's rep, I nicknamed the Cobra because he listens to everything that you say and then uses it against you later. So you have to be very careful what you say. Well, he's going to lose his title today. Yep, he's not the Cobra anymore. Sorry, dude, you're losing your title. And uh, for two reasons. One, I'm hip to his jive, baby. I've built a relationship with him and uh, I've done battle with him and I've beaten him on more than one occasion. And the, the occasions where I know I'm going to lose, I just follow my sword. I just beg for mercy. And, you know, I don't even argue with him. I'm just, yep, I honk that up. What can you do for me, bro? And he's like, well, let's try to fix it this way. It works uh, very nicely. So the whole waiting, waiting, waiting and strike uh, is, is gone with him. Um, I have his name as the Cobra in my phone. I'm changing it to his real name. Sorry, you lost your title for that reason, plus, <laughs> over the last two days, I have met somebody that is taking the title of the Cobra. A um, little background, if you guys roll all the way back to my March 2nd video, I believe the title, uh, it, it says uh, on the thumbnail there, uh, Blood in His Vomit, uh, somewhere. Blood in His Vomit. It's a story I told you about how we uh, just found one of the electricians uh, just sitting there. Uh, at the time, we thought he was throwing up blood, but he wasn't. It was his lunch, uh, frankly. But he had some pretty bad contusions. Um, he was a little, uh, a little out of it. Ended up going to the hospital. Uh, fracture in his skull. It was a pretty, pretty serious matter. But nobody could figure out what happened to him. Uh, he, they, they found him in this doorway that leads into the job, and. Uh, there was nothing around him that could have fallen and hit him. I mean, there was just nothing. We were all stymied, still are to this day. Although, using our CSI skills, we've managed to put together a scenario that's plausible. So anyway, that happened then, and boom, Bob's your uncle. Poor kid went to the hospital. He's recovered. Um, haven't seen him since. Great kid, by the way. Quiet, just did his job. Eh, I'm stuck in traffic. Did you hear that part? Get her done. Well, two and a half months later, yesterday, I am sitting at my desk and all of a sudden a dude comes in and goes, hi, are you the superintendent? I'm like, yes, I am. He goes, hi, and he throws down his credentials. My name is, X, my name is soon to be the Cobra and I am from Cal OSHA. What? <laughs> why, why are you here, sir? Oh, I'm an investigator. Um, and I'm here to investigate the incident where the young man went to the hospital. What? Uh, hey, bro. That was like two and a half months ago, man. What the hell? What are you doing here now? So he proceeds to talk to us, and he's just like, "Oh, this is a just a uh, informal matter. We're just got. I just got to interview a couple people and, and take a look at the scene, take some pictures, and I'll be out of here. It, it's it's a quick deal. Okay, no problem." 
So he interviews uh, the foreman and the electricians, because this guy was an electrician. And all that's kind of cool. And he's being really nice. And then he uh, gets into a meeting in my office, and my co-superintendent joins us because he was part of the action. And my co-superintendent and I, without saying it, were both on the same damn page. We did not trust this guy as far as we could see him. And he was talking like, oh, it, it's... He was saying things like, oh, I'm not going to give you guys much of shit for that. And he goes, oh, that's fucked up what happened. He's talking like a construction dude, like one of us. Just, hey, ha, 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 everything's fun. Oh, and then this. Oh, do you have this paperwork? Do you have that? I'm, we're producing everything, man. Batting 1,000 with this guy. Because we're wired to my job, baby. Thanks to my director who set us up that way. But anyway, I digress. So he's talking like that and everything's cool. And... Um, and I told him at one point, I said, well, you know, um, you know about how long this is going to take. I know you got a job to do, but it's my anniversary and I need to get out of here at like two o'clock. And he goes, oh, you can go whenever you want to. I said, well, actually, sir, I cannot. I'm lead superintendent and I need to be here so long as you're here. Okay, well, this will just take another few minutes. Uh, it'll be fine. The uh, mf -er, I leave at two, it was there till 3.30 baby 3.13 and um, but just the nicest guy in the world when he left he's like well you know I think I got everything I need Bob Jaroko boom I'm out of here deuces today I'm getting ready to go out and get my truck washed and as I'm walking out of the trailer who's out there the new Cobra he's out there and I'm like hey uh Cobretti, oh, what's going on? He goes, oh, you know, there was one guy I didn't get to talk to yesterday, and I just want to interview him today. Okay. So he interviews that guy. And then suddenly things start changing. Now he's walking around, poking his head around, taking pictures of everything. And he went from, yo, dude, how you doing, to, I am the fucking OSHA inspector, and you're going to listen to my shit. He completely switched gears in his attitude. Um, and, you know, I know enough to know I got to keep my mouth shut. Because if I push him, he will find things wrong. And if I push him, he'll find more things wrong. And suddenly, uh, Steve gets handcuffs and goes to jail because he's a terrible safety superintendent. So anyway, <clears throat> we get over to the... There's these things called tow boards. Okay, there's a board that sits like this at the edge of scaffolding over doorways. So if somebody's up there with a drill or something and they kick it, it won't fall off the scaffolding, fall down and hit somebody coming out of the building. Frankly, I am 100% agreement with that safety feature. Um, I've had stuff fall on me before, not enough to injure me, but you never know, right? So I'm down with it. I'm down with the sickness. And uh, so we had tow boards everywhere. And the ones where the kid was found, the injured kid are still in place. The problemo, amigos, is about 50% of the tow boards got displaced when my scaffolding contractor went through and cleaned off his scaffolding and he never put it back, dumbass. So I put somebody on a ride. I didn't notice they'd done that. I have been concentrating inside the building. So that's, that's on me and my team to not call them on it. But even still, Jesus. So he says, the reason I'm looking at the tow boards is because here's what I think happened to that young man. I think what happened is something fell off the scaffolding and hit him in the head. And then you put up tow boards and telling me that there's tow boards. And I said, hey, Cobretti. The pictures I showed you were taken of the scene on the day at the time the incident happened. Those tow boards were in place. They were all in place at that time. What happened is the kid tripped, hit his head against the scaffolding, hard hat came off, hit his head against the block wall. As he was rolling to fall, probably unconscious, hit his head twice on the slab behind him. That's the only plausible explanation. Here's the thing. The kid had a, a scratched up deformation right here in his hard hat. And he had a goose egg this big right here. How do you get this goose egg with a hard hat on? Why is it messed up over here? 
If something would have fallen from that building and hit him in the head hard enough to form that goose egg, he would be dead. It would have broken his neck or his back or something. It'd have to be a steel I-beam or some shit. Not a random two by four or whatever. I got up in his grill a little bit. I did. And uh, I actually took a step towards him when I did. I've been under so much pressure and tension with this dude that I was, I, I had a fantasy about just dropping him. Sorry, I'll pay the I'll pay the penalty. I'm gonna drop your freaking cobretty ass. I backed down afterwards, realizing that if I go too far, I'm gonna be in some big trouble. So uh, that proceeded according to plan. He also had a problem. He says, "Hey, your building's taller than 60 feet. You should have a construction hoist or man lift, like an elevator outside the building." And it's like, "Hey, dude, uh, OSHA said we don't need one." Um, he goes, "Well, of course you have to have one." He measured my building. It's like, look, it's over 60 feet. Come to find out, it's like, no, sir, the primary construction entrance is on the other side. And the dirt kind of goes, it's low, It's like 14 feet lower here and it slopes up to the other side of the building. On that side, sir, it's 14 feet shorter. That's where EMS pulls up to rescue people. Don't need one. And he's like, oh, that's the construction entrance, bro. He's suddenly broing me again. All right, so I'm not going to belabor the point. What I'm going to tell you is this, though. Uh, I'm supposed to leave at 2 on Friday. Actually, my boss was going to let me leave early. Screw that action, apparently. Mother f I digress. He's got a job to do. I know. But he didn't have to be a dick about it. Um, so at the end, he's like, I got... He, he's like... I said, is this going to take much longer? I, uh, we're shutting the job down right now so everybody can go home for the long weekend. And, uh, you know, we can't do it with you here. He goes, uh, I'm almost done. I get got one other guy to talk to about four questions and I'm out of here. Those four questions took him 40 fucking minutes, man. Finally, even though they were sprecancy Spanishing, they were Spanishing back and forth. I know enough about body language and internality of speech to know that the interview was over and now he was just shooting the shit with the kid. So I walked in there and I said, hey, Cabretti, are you about done? because we're closing the job down and everybody needs to get out of here to start their long weekend. And he goes, oh yeah, we're done, we're done. And I walked in, I started shutting my, my shit down and uh, he proceeded to leave about five minutes after that. But the problem is, the tow boards weren't in place. My scaffolding contractor is gonna get hit with a citation. And the general contractor is gonna get hit with a citation. Now, I think, though, if we jump on it and comply, we got guys working tomorrow to fix it, and when he comes back again on Tuesday, baby, uh, it'll be right. And so the citations will conceivably be smaller. But I'm telling you, he is the classic Cobra because he's all, he softens you up, softens you up, and boom, he, like that. I've had two incredibly stressful days. I am so exhausted right now. Uh, of all days, I wish I didn't have traffic. But anyway, there's my long-ass story about uh, the last couple of days of what I have experienced. I'm really trying to get home to have a three-day weekend with my beautiful wife, baby. By the way, thanks for all the awesome comments on yesterday's video. Um, especially Cindy Brown, my wife, the queen of everything. They mean a lot to her that uh, you guys, uh, you've adopted us both as your video, I don't know, <laughs> jesters or whatever the hell we are. So there you go. I'm going to spend some time working on the railroad this weekend, uh, making some videos, relaxing, and probably just drinking like a fish. So anyway, there is the end of the episode. Uh, and until I hopefully see you again on Tuesday, my name is Steve Brown, and watch out for Cobretti.